Welcome back to Our Ventura TV. I'm Lynn Fairley, and I have a really special guest. This person's quite, quite important in our community. Welcome, Commodore Captain Todd Watkins. Hey, thanks, Lynn. Appreciate you having me today. I don't know about uh, important, but it's an honor to be here and visit with you, ma'am. Well, what does it mean to be the Commodore of a naval base? Commodore is uh, used to be a rank a long time ago in the in the in the Navy. Now it's just a positional title. A uh, captain is the rank, and a commodore is over a specific type model series of aircraft. In my case, it's uh, the E-2 Hawkeyes and the C-2 Greyhounds in the Navy. So we have assets here in uh, Point Magoo, our Hawkeyes, and we have our C-2 Greyhounds in uh, San Diego and in Norfolk. We have Hawkeyes in Norfolk, and we have Hawkeyes and Greyhounds in Itsugi, Japan. So it's the, the wing commander over a type model series of aircraft as a Commodore. So that means you're the top dog of the top guns. Oh, no, ma'am. Just uh, making sure that folks have what they need to go out and do our nation's business. Uh, that would be a yes. Okay. <laughs> Last time I saw you, we were on the USS Reagan in Santa Barbara. And I would encourage folks to go see an aircraft carrier if they ever do get the chance. Okay. I was astonished. And you served on that. I, I have, career. Lynn, and I've been in the Navy coming up, it's hard to believe, but I'm coming up on 25 years now in the Navy, and I have to be honest with you, every time I set foot on an aircraft carrier, whether it's walking aboard one, you know, floating out to it and walking off of a, a boat like we did last time down in Santa Barbara, or flying aboard one in, a, in an aircraft and, and landing, landing on it and getting out, I'm always astonished. I'm just amazed uh, at the capability of an aircraft carrier, and the Reagan is truly a very, very special ship. And as you mentioned, while I was the commanding officer of the Black Eagles, VAW 113 stationed in Point Magoo, California, uh, we did a couple of deployments on USS Ronald Reagan, and it's, uh, it's a very special ship. It is. It's nuclear powered. Yes, ma'am. And I think the capability of the air wing is something like 60 aircraft. Can you name those aircraft? It's, it's that, uh, you know, give or take. It's a carrier air wing, uh, we call it, and uh, all the Commodores have their aircraft trained up, and they make sure they have uh, all the people and the parts and all the machinery and the training necessary to go out and do their nation's business. And then each of those individual Type Mall Series squadrons will go to a carrier air wing commanded by CAG, and he's the guy out there fighting the war. He is the, the commander of the air wing aboard, uh, in this case, the USS Ronald Reagan. And he has some of each flavor of aircraft. There's a variety of uh, helicopters aboard in the carrier air wing. Uh, there are strike fighter aircraft via the, the Legacy Hornet or the Super Hornet uh, aircraft. Uh, there are aircraft that do electronic warfare, either Prowlers or the F-18G Growler aircraft now out of, uh, out of Whidbey Island. And then you have the E-2 Hawkeye to do the command and control aspects of it. We detect any incoming you know, bad guys coming out towards the aircraft carrier. And then we also command and control the efforts of all those fighter aircraft and electronic warfare aircraft and helicopters uh, in the air wing. And then you know, uh, last but not least is our logistics aircraft, the C-2 Greyhound, which uh, keeps that lifeline of logistics of people, parts, and equipment flowing out to the uh, aircraft carrier at vast distances away from the shore, ma'am. That's re remarkable. And fully loaded with the aircraft and the air wing and all the personnel, I think it carries approximately 6,000 people. Roughly, yes ma'am. And if you lay down the Empire State Building minus the antenna, that's the length of that aircraft carrier. It is a big piece of gear, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> Incredible. And it is nuclear powered and I had the opportunity to speak with a nuclear physicist on board who told me, well he actually asked me to guess how much fuel it would take to power that that entire loaded, entirely loaded aircraft carrier for one hour. He said the fuel required for one hour is the size of a dime. Wow. So therefore the range is for 20 to 25 years at sea. How is it possible that that aircraft carrier never has to come back to port? Well, I tell you what, it's, there's, it's a fact that that carrier can stay out at sea a lot longer than the sailors want to be at sea. <laughs> They're ready to pull in for a port call at some point. But there's, you know, naval aviation, the Navy in general, but especially naval aviation is, is a team sport. And for that carrier to stay out there at sea like that, there's a, there's a lot that has to happen. And logistics is what really uh, keeps a carrier at sea. The carrier can stay out there indefinitely, but the aircraft need fuel, the aircraft need parts, the people need food. And for that to happen, there's a variety of supply ships that are able to come out there alongside uh, that, that nuclear powered carrier underway and while we're still doing our, our business, I've actually landed on an aircraft carrier at night 
while it was being resupplied from a supply ship underway. Oh my goodness. So it's just amazing that our, our Navy can do that. Always, that always Im impresses me that our ship handlers and, and carrier COs are able to do that. But there'll be, you know, uh, fuel hoses going across, refueling the, the tanks of fuel for the, for the aircraft, you know, pallets of food coming aboard for the crew uh, while the ship is underway. And that allows that carrier to stay out there and operate indefinitely, projecting power if needed be wherever in the world, provided our logistics ships can keep flowing to us. And like I mentioned, the C2 Greyhound getting those critical parts out there quickly uh, on a daily basis to us. And you land on this ship at night while it's moving. That's remarkable. Well, every carrier aviator does that. That's an inherent skill that we are, are taught when we're very young. You know, Ensign Lieutenant JG Aviators is landing our aircraft at night, and that's something that's kind of unique uh, to the U.S. Navy. There are other nations out there. The French, for instance, operate a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, and they have a night capability too, but only their very senior aviators uh, typically are on the night page, as we call it, and do night carrier landings. For a, for a, a naval aviator in the United States Navy, it's just a given that you're going to land your airplane aboard the ship at night. That's remarkable. Now let's back up a little bit in your career. Before you joined uh, the Navy 25 years ago, you were in the rodeo, and you have the, one of the most amazing photographs I've ever seen in my life, and that's you on your back underneath an enormous bull making eye contact with each other. Right. How did you get out from underneath that bowl? Well, that, I've never asked you that question. That's one of those big fail photographs up there. <laughs> it's at the, Texas, at the college rodeo at Texas Tech. I went to college on a rodeo scholarship and then rodeoed professionally. And one of my you know, shipmates found that photo of me online and gave it to me at a, as a going away present. I, I posted that up on my wall, Lynn, to remind me that if I'm ever having a bad day in the Navy, it's just not that bad. You at know, all. life's pretty good. but. Uh, How did you get out from underneath that bull? Well, kind of like in the Navy where you have a lot of good folks watching out for you and helping you, uh, same thing there. You know, a good bullfighter pulled him off. My friends drug me out of the way and was able to shake it off and come back and ride another day. Well, that's remarkable. I would like you now to tell our viewers all about the local base. I, I, I believe we don't have enough information in, out in public, which is why we, one of the reasons we asked you to come today, to, to inform the public what is exactly out there. Wow, there's a lot out there, and I tell you what, it's, it's such a unique base. And when I say the base, I'm talking about Naval Base Ventura County, which a lot of folks may not realize that it's actually three bases. You have uh, Port Wanimi over in the Wanimi area, where it's primarily uh, CBs is what that base is known for, as well as some uh, NAVC uh, systems testing uh, commands that are there. Then you have Point Magoo, which of course is home to, to me, it's uh, home to the Air Wings, it's home to VR-55, which is a C-130 squadron, it's home to an Air Guard C-130 squadron out there as well, and it's home to VX-30, which is a testing squadron. A lot of test ranges right off of uh, Point Magoo, which makes it a very unique and very, very special base. Uh, and also we have uh, St. Nicholas Island, which is part of Naval Base Ventura County. So it a, it's a, covers a lot of area. It's spread out all over the place. Acre-wise, it's, it's up there with some of our biggest, biggest bases. Uh, not as many people, but it's a remarkable number of people that do work there. We have over 5,000 uh, active duty sailors who work in Naval Base Ventura County. 5,000 DOD civilians, and another, I believe it's about 3,000 contractors uh, that work out there at the base. And then there's also incidental jobs associated with the base that range into about the 3,000 number, I believe, as well. Uh, Larry Vasquez, Captain Larry Vasquez, a uh, helo pilot by trade, is the, uh, the base uh, commanding officer. Awesome, great American. Love, love working is. to him. He's yes. my next door neighbor, and he's really doing some, uh, some great things with that base. And I see uh, growth in the future. Just within uh, the, the Hawkeye community, uh, we're going to do something, uh, uh, CAG-5, Carrier Air Wing 5, on the George Washington, four deployed in Japan. Uh, they will be sending their E-2 squadron back home. VAW-113 is going to move to Point Magoo and come under, uh, under our, uh, our roof again. And uh, VAW-125, with the new E-2 Delta Advanced Hawkeye, will be moving from uh, the East Coast uh, to, to Japan. So that's a little bit of growth here in the Point Magoo area. And then there's something that's on the, on the range in the near future for us. When I say near future, five years inside that, uh, we have some additional unmanned systems 
uh, that will deploy aboard a carrier but could be headquartered here at Point Magoo is the vision for that right now. And those are commonly called known as drones, correct? Uh, in the civilian sector, drones maybe, we call them U-Class. U-Class. Yes. Excellent. One of the things though that we are going to miss is you, sir, because you're going down to San Diego for some reason and we want you to stay here. Well, I'm not sure where I'm going yet. Okay. I know that my command will wrap up at the end of September and I'm going somewhere else. That's the great thing about the Navy is you know, if, if you don't like the job that you're doing or the boss that you're working for, just wait because in 18 months, one of the two of you is going to leave. You know, something's <laughs> going something's to change. That's interesting. For our youth today, what message would you like to leave them with? Wow. For, for our message today, talking to youth, I would say dream big. Don't, don't limit yourself by, by, by what other folks are telling you can do. Uh, if a person can go from being you know, a bull rider to being a you know, Commodore of a, of a type model series aircraft in the Navy, anyone can do anything that they want to do. So I would say dream big, uh, work hard, uh, stay, stay physically fit, do well in school, and just figure out what it is that you want to do and put your head down and get after it. You know, big, big goals are kind of like eating an elephant. They look like they're overwhelming and you'll never get there, but if you head down, get to put your head down and start taking a bite at a time, next thing you know, you're, you're accomplishing your goals. Over 5,000 hours of flight time you have in a relatively short period of time, and you are still a very young man. <laughs> I appreciate you saying that. That's <laughs> a dream. That's a big dream that's come true. I've been very, very blessed. You know, that when I was manning up to go flying this morning, I did have the opportunity to go fly, and it was amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm thankful every day for the opportunity to fly and to serve in the Navy. It's been a, it's been a great career. If you've had more time in the air than in your boots on the ground, <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> yeah. Because that's uh, you're a pilot's pilot too. I understand the pilots, the way they speak about you. The other folks that I've had the the great pleasure to interview on the radio have told me that you're a real pilot's pilot. Well, I enjoy that and I love what I do. It's clear. Thank you. You're a wonderful, wonderful role model. I hope you can come back and, and tell us more about the base as it grows, and I hope you don't go too far away. All right, Lynn, I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. Commodore, Captain Todd Watkins, thank you again for coming on this segment of Our Ventura TV. It's very, very much appreciated. Thank you for watching Our Ventura TV.